During the 18th century, hair became overly extravagant, which I think is wonderful. Um, in the earlier part of that century, um, the French court and the people with wealth did their hair, and it was elaborate, but it wasn't over the top. As we move towards the 1850s, 1650s, 60s, 70s, and towards the end of the century, hair was ludicrous. It went to ridiculous heights. Um, and, you know, it, it started catching light on six-foot uh, candelabras because it was so ridiculously tall. I think it's fabulous, personally. Um, can't really bring it that back for today, but it was great. But what we're going to do today, again, using natural hair, and I might use a piece in this as well, but what I'm trying to do is show you some looks that you can do with um, the natural hair, which will still give you the illusional feeling of that period. We're going to work again with our trusty hot rollers and we're going to do a look from the early to mid period where we've got a very austere, very strong front area and then a lot more design into the back. And the curls are more ringlet um, even though they're placed up and you'll see what I mean, that you actually put them in, almost in blocks or logs um, as opposed to splitting them up which we do more for the 40s and definitely for the 60s where we're creating those uh, placed curl on curl on curl sort of thing to add the height. So I'm working through the center and I'm going to use hot rollers. Could you set this with regular rollers and do a wet set? Absolutely. Um, you know, if you've got the, la the luxury of a lace front or a wig that you're using, obviously you're going to set this up on a postiche um, board first and it's going to be ready and going and you can just place it glue the front down and you're done. But if you haven't got that sort of budget and you're working with the person's natural hair, this is just a great way to get the, um, the body into the hair to start your look. So again, I'm, I'm rolling on base, so I'm bringing it forward. And that front roller is a little wobbly, but I'm just gonna put this one in next and then we'll straighten that up. You could lose, use um, a large barrel iron as well if you wanted, a curling iron or tong uh, to put this in. It's entirely up to you. All I want is a couple of rows here just to um, start to get the body into the hair. So I've got two rollers in there. I'm coming into the side, lining that up with the front area and then I'll look at this. Do I need two rollers or one? Again I'm doing this just for body so I pretty much figure I can get away with one roller because I'm going to be rolling this back on itself. So let's come through to the ends. Wrap this around. And then I'm just going to bring that back. So I've got everything nice and smooth there. And then you're just going to add your clip to hold it. So it's a fairly big section, but it's just going to hold the hair in place. It's an extraordinary period for hairdressers. Um, if you had wealth, hairdressers is one of your best friends because the people of court at the time that started competing with each other uh, for the most elaborate and strongest looks. Hair pieces were massive and they were designed and in fact there was complete systems worked out and books written on the tools you needed to do hair including compasses for measurements of how things were going to be placed. Um, it became um, an integral part of court society and it, it was just as I say, to the point of ridiculous, which I think always is wonderful. I mean, I think things should always be much more over the top than subdued, but not everybody wants to live that way. Um, but it must have been an amazing time to live from the hair perspective, if you had money. It's interesting because we always say, oh, I wish I lived in that period, I lived, wish I lived in that period. But it really did depend on whatever period of history you live in, what area or notation of society you were living in because if you were poor none of this made any difference. You didn't have anything um, that was pleasant in your life, you were just busy trying to survive. But for the elite it certainly was an interesting time. So we have our largest rollers in here. Now in the back you could move to an iron again or a tong or you can carry on with the rollers. 
I'm going to continue with rollers and I'm just taking random sections now. So this is at an angle, you can see that. And I'm going to place a medium sized roller in here. All I'm trying to do now is create body and curl into the hair. So your placements, you know, you might want to look and say, okay, I want that to go there, I want this, that to go here. But work out what, what you feel in your mind the look is going to be at the end. This roller, for instance, is backing on to this. I know that this is going to go into a large curl or large area around the front. So with this particular rod, I'm actually going to roll in the opposite direction. So I'm going to bring the hair down and now I'm actually going to roll back up and let's just get those ends under, use your tail comb and then you can always comb the ends over. Some of this hair, as I've said before, might fall, it's actually staying, but it could fall off the rod. Don't worry too much, as long as you've got the main hair on there and it's holding, then you're going to get the body that you want. Okay, so that's going in the opposite direction to the first one I put in, and then I'm going to place one on the opposite side. These aren't matched up, I'm not trying to put these in in a brick formation, which we've spoken about before. I'm not trying to put them in a straight row, which is another thing we've spoken about with different looks. I'm just randomly putting curl into the hair. All I want to do is to create movement in the hair, which I'm going to use to make my ringlet or smooth curl areas. I wouldn't say ringlet in the sense of falling down, which we've done before. Um, you could do that into this. There's a lot of variations on these looks. But for me at the moment, um, these are all going to be placed back compactly into the head shape. So again, I'm just going to continue to work down and place my hot rollers as I see fit into this shape. Coming across to the side, and I'll just place another roller. Your thermal spray is always your friend when you're using any hot tools, because what it does is it not only protects the hair, um, but it will also help to add extra body to the hair and hold that shape a little stronger for you. So it's um, it's a good idea to to work with the thermal spray at all times because it's helping you in several different ways. I'll come into this side just so you can see me put this one in and then what I'll do is I'll continue to roll the hair and then I'll just show you the pattern at the end because all I'm doing is randomly putting these rollers in. So here we go with another one on the side and bringing those ends under, tuck them under, make sure they're smooth Bring the rod down, add a clip, and then on to my next one. And I'm opposing that now, so I'm going in a different direction. So we'll continue here, popping the rollers in. Once I've got them done, then I'll show you, and then we'll obviously wait for them to cool down before we move on to the next step. So here we are with the um, rollers all the way through and as I said stagger them in whatever pattern you want uh, throughout the shape because what we're going to do is we're going to use these very much in placement as they are. We might split them in half uh, because of the length of the hair to create more curl and um, I have a piece which I'm going to set up as well so that we can add extended curl into this. So this will now cool down and then we'll move on to the piece and then once this is cool, then we'll start doing the design. So with our model now cooling down, I'm going to add um, a quarter piece um, to her hair. Now you can see 
This actually has um, a couple of threads and it's just a small base and you can pull these together actually around um, if you were doing a ponytail or a top knot you can actually, uh, uh, like shorter hair, someone hasn't got the amount of hair you want, you can just pull this tight around there, put a couple of pins in and it holds in place and then you can work with the hair itself. But obviously it's hair and so I can work with it however I want. This is um, a fiber, so this isn't natural hair and so on this you wouldn't be using uh, a flat iron, you wouldn't be using a curling iron because what it will do is literally shrivel up and burn the hair. Fibers are changing over the years and they actually take a lot more heat than they used to, but you really want to be careful. Hot rollers on the other hand, hot sticks, um, blow dryer, brushes, anything like that you're absolutely fine with. So I'm taking another set of hot rollers and all I'm doing is I'm going to take some sections across this. I can still use my thermal spray so I can still like help to increase uh, the movement that I'm going to put into the hair, but I'm just taking this, going to get my hot rollers and just take those ends around, make sure they go under with my tail comb, and I'm just going to randomly set this. Now I said randomly with the model and I'm saying the same here because I'm just wanting to get body in. Afterwards I'll design this and put this into place. Now we often use the clips that come with the rollers. If these run out and they're like socks in the laundry, you always lose them. You can use a regular pin quite easily when you're using any sort of hot roller or roller. Get your pin. Once you've got the um, roller to the base of the piece that you're working on or the model that you're working on, then put the pin in to the hair, bring it around to turn it and then just push it underneath and it'll hold. And you can do that with the bobby pin as well. But so often um, people will run out of clips. Um, they also come with clamps. I know that the hot rollers come with clamps. If you're not careful with those clamps, I find anyway that they make a mark in their hair, almost a grip mark. You get teeth marks on their hair and then you spend your time trying to get those out. So. If you just use a pin, if you haven't got your original clips, you'll find that that'll work quite nicely and um, will hold the hair. So just a little tip, which might save you a lot of heartache and swearing if you can't find your clips. Okay, so we're just moving over to another section. You can vary the sizes or you can stick with the same. It really depends on what you have in mind but you'll see once we finish this how it sits and then you can decide for yourself if you're doing um, a stage play or something on set that you need to do this for or you might just be doing it for a, a fancy dress with friends but whichever way it is um, your movement once you see my placement you'll realize you can you can vary it according to the look that you're actually going to end up with now again I've spoken about this with them um, several different um, looks and different periods. If you have someone with a bob length hair, it normally means that the front is at least to the chin. Um, the, the back, completely gone. But when you're looking at period looks and you still want a natural hairline, you haven't got the budget for like a lace front or something where the hair is going to look natural, then um, you can use that front. You can still pull it up because you've got enough length to do that. And then the whole of the back area can be a piece. Um, like a, a larger piece than this, maybe a half wig, which you can set on the stand. You can actually do the placement on your uh, wig block. And then when you come to it, you can just place it on the um, model or actress. And all you're doing then is designing the front, putting the piece on and securing it in place so that your bobby pins or your pins are not showing and then you have a complete look without even having to think about it. The nice thing about that is it comes off at the end of your set, it goes back on your wig block, and it's ready for the next day. So if you're looking for, um, uh, if you're looking for consistency um, with your look, you're going to have that because it'll go directly back on the next day and all you're working with is the front. 
So it's, it's a nice option to have. Even if someone's got a lot of hair that you don't want to be redressing each time and you have the budget for pieces, then obviously they are good because you can just place them. The only thing I like if I haven't got a lace front is to know that the natural hairline around the front at least um, looks as real as possible. If I was doing ringlets, um, I would try as much as possible to get real hair because I'd want to be taking these and I would be spiral winding them quite close as we've done before in some of our other uh, videos uh, so that the hair actually sits very close to. Obviously for, for some of the more youthful Victorian looks we had the spiral and then that hung very loose and soft and sort of bouncy and that again is right for the period. So always study up um, on the period as, as well as hopefully getting some information from me. You'll find there's um, a plethora of different looks for each time because obviously there's thousands of people doing their hair and there's always slight variations. Okay, just a couple more rollers to put in and then this will cool down the same as our model and then we'll come back together with the two of them and we'll combine our hair piece with our model's hair so that we can get a nice authentic mid to early 17 or 18th century, like 1730, that type of feeling into the look. So we've taken our rollers out and we've now separated the areas. The larger rollers that we put in the front I've separated and I've just put some clips in so that we can hold the, the back area out of the way because we sort of shaped this front bit for the beginning of the style and this is all to do with the intricacy at the back. So separating those through and then just working with my brush and I'm going to do that on both sides and I'm just doing this just to pull the whole thing together. This is going to become a roll. Um, but more of a period roll as opposed to like a 1940s period roll. This is uh, throughout the whole shape. And because of the period that we're doing, it's going to be slightly higher. So again, if you look at the Victorian look, some of those that we've done, we actually rolled through the front as well. But it was a more subdued height to that. Um, this is going to have a little bit more. It's not up to the pompadour levels, but it has got some height to it. So we'll come into the center. and bring that forward and again remember our back combing I'll show you and do it every time we need to do it but we're either doing it to fluff up pull back or add volume and this is volume to the root so one two three four you can feel it's in the root I'm going to go up a little bit further but those first four are the ones that are going to let you know this hair is going to stay where you want it to I've always said it, put your comb in, feel at the root. If you can feel that hair um, tight at the root, then you know it's in. If it's flopping around or the comb's moving, you've not got the movement where you need it. And that again is where the thermal spray really helps because it helps you hold that in place. We're moving this shape forward and back. So I'm coming in with my next section and I'm pulling it forward because I want to get the movement into that area. Um, if this is too wide, obviously take two sections as I did in the top. It's, it's entirely up to you according to how you're going to build this up. One, two, three, four. There you go. Come across to the opposite side and I'm just going to repeat putting it forward, back combing it up, putting it forward and back combing it up. Now I can come through with a little spray. And now it's bristle brush time, your Boar's bristle brush, your best friend when you're styling. And you're going to pull this up and we're going to look at our height and look at the consistency in these sides because look, we need to pull that together. We don't want this to be separate. So once I've got smoothness and the back comb is not showing, then I'm going to come in and draw this hair together just so that I can see and normally you'll be working with a mirror. I mean, obviously I'm not today because I'm working with the cameras. And so 
I just want to make sure that I have a nice consistency to this. So from the back, I'm using the actual line that we scored with the rollers originally as my place that I know I'm going to anchor to. So I'm turning this under, and now instead of rolling, which we've done with many of our shapes, you'll take the clone, roll it down. I'm bringing that in, and then I'm looking at where my height's going to sit. And that looks quite nice. So once I know where my height is going to sit, then I can just place my first pin on the interior. As I always say, do not hit this edge. You want to hit the interior of the shape so that this edge is still free because I've got to blend this shape together. So let's have a look. Okay. And now I'll come into the side. Again, what's the width or length of this area? Do I need to split it in two to get um, a nice shape? If you do, then just separate as necessary to blend it together. I'm pulling this up, pop a little spray on. And now I'm bending these ends over. I'm looking at the consistency of that round shape from the front. Okay, so now I know I've got smoothness here. And let me just hold this with my tail comb. And then I can turn and show you. So now I'm doing the same from the back. So I'm going to turn this over. I'm going to look. And now let me turn that a little bit more into the bottom. So I'm using my finger to turn that in. And then I can open my pin up and I can actually go in. This is all out of the way. I can go into the edge of here and pin in. Let me just move this clip a little bit because I've got so much abundance of hair. I want to make sure you can see. So we've turned that clip in and held that in place. Now I can come up to the top where I have a blending to do between the top and the side. And I can start to roll that under, fill it out as I see fit. And then I can use another pin, but now I can cross the two areas. Now, if the hair of your model, actress, person that you're doing is finer, could you use a pad through the front of this, bring it forward, roll the hair and have that sitting here? Absolutely. A lot less work because you still need to back comb a little, but once you back combed, you'd put it all the way forward, you'd put your pad in, you'd roll the pad back, and then you can just pin straight in and it'll be very clean. But if you haven't got pads, I like to show you that it can be done with the hair on its own and you can still get a nice clean result. So we're going to work a little bit more on this now just to make sure it's smooth from the front, smooth from the back. Take your time. If you were doing this for a consistent night after night show, then yeah, I would suggest a pad or something like that because you'll want to make sure that you're getting the same look every time. Can I get the same look from this? Obviously a hairdresser at the time would have been able to uh, create the same thing and hairdressers throughout history um, have been able to create the same look week after week when people keep the same um, hairstyle. So it's absolutely possible, but obviously if you're using pads and pieces, it's gonna be a lot easier for you um, to reconstruct time, time limit wise really. Coming across to the opposite side, and we're going to repeat what we did. So I'll just use my brush to make sure that I'm completely smooth on the outside. Make sure that these two areas come together. My tool table is always full. I'd like to know that I've got everything I need with me um, so that I don't have to go wandering off. So try and keep as many things as you need close at hand because it's much easier than trying to run off and find something. Having a pin box that has everything in and then other little bits and pieces that you want really makes a big difference to your timing when you're trying to get something 
done on a regular basis and consistent. Blend the two together. Make sure it's firm with the pins that you're using so that your shape is holding. This sort of thing's fun for um, any sort of occasion like Halloween or something as well um, because people quite often put the effort into the costume and then get one of those awful nylon wigs which just throws the whole image off. So we have our height which goes very much with the period of the time where height is just beginning beginning to get extraordinary but it's not at that crazy level yet which I absolutely adore when um, the pompadours got very very large. Okay now we're into the back and this is where we staggered our rollers into different positions and literally as opposed to pulling the hair over and rolling which I've done before for different looks, especially in the 60s uh, and some of the uh, 50s. I'm now putting a bit of back combing into the root. I'm choosing an area of hair and smooth over. Almost come back into a roller position. Ends under. Roll down. Keep it as clean as you can. And then either with one or two pins. Pin the hair into place. Ooh, wrong spray. Again, if you had a bunch of rolls made up, um, on our forms which we've shown before you can uh, make them up cut them to size and if you had shorter hair and you managed to get the front up you could do the whole of the back just by pinning and placing uh, rolls that you've already pre-done but today we're working with our natural hair if you remember I rolled this one forward so I'm going to back comb the root Smooth that area out. I haven't got the whole of that curl because I can use this. Just because you put the roller in a certain area doesn't mean you have to put every piece of that hair into your shape. You're building as many little curls as you can because you want this to be intricate. So now I'm bringing that up. And this one's actually going to pin through the center and onto our front shape. I'll take another smaller section now. Now if the hair is particularly long, you could make this into two rolls. And I'll show you that just so that you're aware of how you can do this. Because the more intricate, obviously, um, the more fun the shape will be. So I'll smooth that all the way down. I'll then lift the hair with my hand, put my first curl in, bring my pin to the root and to the curl so that we're actually placing that. Now I have the other end. Bring that together, but in an opposite direction, place that curl. So I'm not placing it so that they sit next to each other, or else that would just be like a sausage, and um, that would be a bit pointless. You might as well just make a longer curl. But this way, I actually get one going in the opposite direction and smaller. So it just adds a little bit of in, uh, like intricacy to the look. Go in to the curl, grab both ends, pin to 
the root. I can now pick up a little bit of that hair next to it. Again, don't go where the rollers were just as that has to be in that particular place. You want to split these up and actually get more curls happening. And as I've shown you here, make sure they go in different directions because otherwise what they're going to do is sit across uh, just in rows. Now there is another look that we'll be doing where the curls do sit in rows and it's the same sort of period but this is where you can get variation and so that's why I've done several looks which have the same basis but you can see that variation because that way you can see how you could build up a room full of people's hair and, um, and still have a, a difference to each look. through any period of history, obviously each look that you, that people have, has that individualism to it and that's what's fun. The only thing you do want to do is make sure that it is true to the period as much as possible. In film and theatre, is there liberties taken with variations? Absolutely, I mean that's what it's about. It would have been done at the time. It's just that you want to make sure that it, it has some bearing on the reality of the look. Just pop your head over slightly. Great. Okay. I'm just going to pull this back and I'm going to put a pin in here. So I'm back combed that up as you saw and now pulling it back from the hairline, putting a pin in to hold it and that way I can bring this back onto the hairline and cover that area up. If I rolled it right there it's going to flop and be down too far whereas this way I can roll it, as you can see, I can bring it onto the hairline and then I can put my pin in. And again, all your pins um, need to be hidden because they're not something that would have been seen at the time. So you want to make sure that they're out of the way. So you can see the way that this is building, each area a little bit different, each area just pinning and putting those curls into place. I'm going to continue through the back doing the same thing and then as I get past the occipital into this bottom area I'm just going to add the piece and we'll talk about that. So I'm just going to carry on putting a few more of these rolls in place and, um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the style. All you need to worry about here is just building up your shape the way that we have be begun on this one side. Now I'm working into the bottom third of the look and I'm just back combing the root of the shape because I'm going to add some extra hair into here which we got ready earlier. So we just curled it the same way. And I'm back combing the root so that I've got something for my hair piece to hold too. I'm just going to get you to pop your head down. Okay. So once the roots are back combed, I'm pulling the hair apart and that's so that I've got a flat surface to add my piece to. I'll take my postiche pins out of the mannequin. I've got one down at the bottom. And now, because I'm not doing this as a ponytail, so I'm not using the pieces to um, pull around an elasticated area. I'm going to place my piece and now I've placed it against the back combed area and now I'm going to cross pin. So I'm putting a pin in and I'm crossing another pin over it. Okay, that's on one side. What that's doing is it's locking the hair piece to the scalp. So again on this side a pin in and then a pin across that pin to lock it into place. Now I'll lift this hair up. I'll just use another clip 
If you've got an assistant, then that's luxury, that's great, and they can hold this. If not, pin this to your curls, but make sure that you don't disturb it. You're just looking for your base, there it is. I know that this is back combed up, so now I'm just doing the same on the underneath. Secure it all the way around, don't just take for granted that like putting it in the top or the side is going to be enough. You can basically see that is going in. In fact, let me take that out. Let me use a light pin so you can see uh, what I'm doing. Obviously normally the pins like on the top would match, but here you go. There's my base, I can feel it's there. I'm putting a pin in and then I'm getting another pin and I'm crossing that over the first pin. So now they're locking that together. I'm actually gonna do another one on the side. I would say four corners should secure it enough. But again, if this is a larger piece, you're gonna want more. So according to the circumference of the piece and where it sits on the head, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you cross pin all the way through. Now I can drop this down and it ain't going nowhere, okay? Now, here's my curls that I've already done. So now I'll take a little piece of this false hair. I'll bring this in, back comb at the root, smooth over, bring it up so that I'm bringing it across my shape. Pin into the natural hair, and then all I'm going to do, I'm just gonna pin on the opposite side. Can you see that's just, if your hair starts to slip, then obviously the, the pin is not holding it enough. So um, cross on the opposite side again. All you're doing is locking that hair down to make sure that it stays in place. So then I'm just going to take the hair, open it up, be, being careful not to um, damage the curl on the ends because I want to keep that. And then I'm going to just twist that around and place the curl. So the curl just matches up with the other curls. And again, take your time to make sure it's feeling comfortable and it's working. And what I do now by putting that curl in is I've got a curl in place and then I've got a bunch of loose curl sitting above. This is the natural hair from the side. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this up. Let's just drop that down, okay. This is natural hair as well. So it's got the same feeling as the hair that we just placed in there. I'm going to bring this hair up. I've already back combed it. Put a pin through. This is actually attaching to my hair piece and that means the hair piece is already attached to the scalp uh, with the cross pinning so I know that that's going to be uh, safe and stay in place. Then I'll grab this. So pull this over. You can still see the natural hairline. Keep your ends nice and smooth so that the curl or ringlet stays all the way down and then pin into the base area, whether it's the natural area or the hair piece, it won't matter because they're both secure and that will hold into that area. I'm gonna come across and I'm gonna do the same on this side, pulling a little bit of that natural hair up. Comb it through, make sure these ends, take your time to make sure your ends are really smooth because that's gonna make the difference as to how this hair is going to sit. I'm pulling this up and into the shape that we're building and you can see the pins from the hair piece. So I'm pulling right into that area. I'm gonna use a pin to hold. And again, as I said on the other side, this is holding to the hair piece, but the hair piece is holding to the scalp because of the way that we cross pinned. I'm going to drop this over. Make sure those ends are really nice and smooth. Bring them down. There you go. There you go. So you just work on them for a few minutes. Make sure they're doing what you want them to. And then 
I'll pin this in to the side. Now, with a lot of the looks at this time, the drop that we have here, where it's smoother and then the curl comes into the bottom, was very popular and prevalent. So, take your hair, force or natural together, just spin them round your finger to get the curl back into the ends. And if you want to loop some together, as I just said, just bring them up, cross them with your finger, make sure you go into the base um, of either the natural hair or the hair piece. And you're just going to put your pin in that loop that you're creating. Okay, and then you're just going to place that into the look. And that will just give you a little bit of consistency between this center area, the curl, and then the curl on the bottom. So you're going to continue to just tidy up these ends. Go around your shape, make sure it's nice and smooth, everything is looking in place. And once it's there, you know that it's firm and it's holding, you know the shape's there. Can you use pads and rolls? Absolutely. Can you do this with natural hair wool? Yeah, we've proved that. And can you do it with basically the whole thing being wigs or pieces? Absolutely again. At this stage, people were beginning to add more and more pieces into their hair. And as the height, literally, of this period went on, um, it went to inordinate levels of height and pieces that were stacked upon each other. And as I said earlier, there's actually books that were written on protractors and combs and measurements that you should use for each of these things, including the size of these rolls. They were supposed to be six inches exactly behind the ear or three inches in three rows at the front. All different things like that that made it a particular look. So there's a lot of information on that. But within that, you can understand that each hairdresser had their own theory and their own way of working. So this is a basic look for the period just as we start to move into height, allowing the curls to sit in. You can have the same look without this so that it's just the curls and very clean at the back, or you can have it where you're allowing this looseness and softness to fall through. So, um, mid 18th century, classic look, hope you like it.